Welcome back to another virtual tasting with Vinny's Beverage Depot. I'm Pat from the Whiskey Hotline, along with Ghostly Joe here. In and out. In and out. Uh, we're very grateful to have John Campbell with us today. John is the distillery manager at Lafroig, uh, Isla's probably peatiest whiskey, I would say. So, John, are you an Isla native? And how did you end up as a distillery manager at such a kind of historic distillery? Uh, yes, no, I am. I'm from the I'm from the island, so that explains the funny accent part. So yeah, uh, understanding a, a Scottish accent is difficult enough, and you're just adding another layer of complexity onto it. Yeah, but after a couple of whiskies, we're all talking the same language. I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah, no, I'm so I'm from the island. I'm from a mile and a half just down the road from Lefroy, who was born and raised in Port Ellen. So um, there, how did I get the job? I don't know, I guess I kept sticking my hand up and people kept trusting me. So I did all the jobs. Um, started off um, putting the numbers in the barrels at the distillery. And just as I say, I just kept moving through, moving, doing different things, uh, learning a lot of technical stuff. And then, yeah, just January the 19th, 2006, at 2.45 in the afternoon, it was mine. It was all mine. <laughs> A memorable time, I'm sure. Yes. No, mom's my mum's birthday too, believe it or not. So, really? Yes. Yep. That's cool. Was any of your jobs ever having to go out in the peat bogs and cut peat? Yes. Yes. No, I'm like... It's, it's, it's one of those things. It's, it sounds all oh, so romantic. Unless, like, my, my, uh, my father used to have a peat bog as well. And we used to go out, and many a summer evening was ruined having to cut peats. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, no, we, we used to go out. And it, it's, it's, it sounds as good for us. Well, it's, it's, it's hugely important for the distillery. But when you're a teenager and you've got to go and cut peats and there's midges and there's snakes and there's all sorts of stuff and there's, I don't know, it's just it's fun to be had. Peats is the last thing you want to do, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's hugely important to the distillery now. Um, we, still, we still get it cut out there at, uh, in our peat bed. So, yeah, no, it's hugely, hugely important to us. Yeah, and that's something specific with Lefroy too, where the peat is still cut by hand and not one of the big machines that kind of scrapes off the top layer, right? Yeah, no, we do. We still try and manage the kind of the hand cut style of peat. Um, it's just there's lots of reasons for this, and a lot of them kind of environmental, I guess, from people who drink Lefroy's point of view, it's flavor. So because we cut it in this technique we keep more moisture in the peat and so by using more moisture we just get slightly different smoke flavors coming through so yeah okay uh our friend simon brooking points out that folks in the u.s don't know what midges are uh simon is not a baseball fan apparently there was a, a famous baseball game between the new york yankees and cleveland indians maybe 10 years ago, the and there was a midge infestation on the field, and they had to pause the game, actually, because they were attacking the pitcher, the Yankees pitcher at the time, Jabba Chamberlain. Uh, now, a midge is just a little small, you know, annoying, biting fly, right? Yeah. But I have yeah, different yeah. midges these, here. These New Yorkers are soft anyway, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, the, yeah, no, midges, they can spoil a glorious evening, especially if there's... <laughs> We need a we need a breeze and we need wind just to keep them down in the grass where they belong. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, they spoiled many a night. Yep. So well, enough yeah. about the midges though. Back to the peat. So hand cut peat, you're saying gives a different smoky character. I always thought it was just you know it's it's not compressed by the machinery and it's just kind of similar. To, uh, I always kind of compared it to. Aga pressing agaves for tequila, I guess, where, you know, you use a traditional stone mill with that. It's just gentler on the fibers of the, of the plant material and you're extracting just a different character out of it. I mean, am, am I on the right track with that? Yeah, I suppose it is similar. It's just like, we will burn it. So from, I guess, 
from a flavour point of view, because it's like a cold smoke and it's got all that moisture in it, it just gives a slightly different peat flavour. So uh, that's the quality aspect. And then from, I guess, the environmental bit, the, because it's more moist, you get more smoke out the same kind of lump of peat because it just doesn't burn as quick. So um, you use less, basically. So um, yeah, no, it's, it's just different. And then the geology of all of the, I guess, island peat, isla peat, versus even other island peat, versus mainland peat, they all have different geologies. So they all have their own kind of unique flavor profile. So if you tasted, say, Highland Park from Orkney, it's going to have a different peat flavour than an Isla yeah. peat malt. And then if you taste, say, your sister distillery Ardmore up in the Highlands, it's Highland peat smoke versus Isla peat smoke. So they're all very, very different. Yeah. Now, you guys are also malting some of this in-house. Uh, yes. Obviously, the Laphroaig is a big brand now, and there's a lot of Laphroaig. I mean, you know, you can't possibly malt all the barley in-house, but how, how much is coming from those traditional maltings at the distillery? You know, we still try and keep it about 20% part. So it's still, yeah. what we do to try and make up for it being a fifth is we peat it higher than the malt that we'll buy in as well, so that it does have a bigger influence. Um, so it, it, it's, it's small, but it's mighty. So yeah, it's just it just we want it to have a huge influence, and we want the Lefroy. The, there's a couple of different things you get from uh, the locally produced malt. You get the smoke flavors, and then you just get a nice oiliness coming through in the whiskey because of the natural germination that we have on the malt floors as well. So there's, that's the two main things we get from that that you'll get in a Lefroy that you maybe not get so much in other animals. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, let's talk about the whiskey then, I suppose. Uh, that's why everyone's here, right? So yeah. we had uh, we have the newest release here, which is the 10 year, it's hard to say, uh, uh, the 10 year sherry cask finish, which yes. now is this a, this is a limited release going forward? Uh, it's limited right now. Okay. Uh, depends on you guys, depends on what you drink. So hopefully it's something we're looking to introduce. It's replacing the uh, triple wood, which we've had okay. for a number of years since 20, when did triple wood come out? Like 2008, 2009, I think. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe old US a wee bit later, 20, 2011. So, um, cause it was in travel retail first, that's right. So, um, so it was in there for a couple of years and then it just became so popular. We pulled it out, put it into domestic markets and then we've just kind of, we're replacing it now with um, Shay. We're just building on the 10 year old brand basically because if you know Lafroy, between 10 and 10 casks, that's 70 to 75% of what we do. And now we're yeah. going to bring in 10 year Sherry. So within that kind of one, area you'll find you, you've got the the, the regular 10 the, and then you've got the kind of cast strength 10 and then you've got a kind of sherry influence because we realize that a lot of people who do like peaty whiskey like sherry peated whiskey as well so oh yeah we've introduced this we're hoping to grow it though definitely i hope to grow it over time okay. sherry and smoke seem to be a natural combination that works quite well yeah. yeah, no, and it's something that we just, it was almost like a gap because we realized that a lot of people do like the sherry peated whiskey and that we didn't really play in that area, and not, not directly anyway. It was kind of like, well, well, we're here in the sides, but so mm -hmm. this is going to bring us right in there. It's, it's, a, it's a combination too. So we've got um, two different styles of Lefroy matured whiskey in this. We've got eight year old bourbon double matured for two years in first fill Oloroso sherry. And then we've got 10 year old fully matured in refill Oloroso sherry, just so that um, we get a combination of things as well. We Because we taste the Lefroy, it has to taste the Lefroy. No shit, John. But like, you, we want you to understand the sherry bit as well. So we've kind of tried to put that all in the one glass and. Um, 
I'm really happy with how it turned out. Really happy with how it turned out because you do get now Sherry and then you get the Lefroy coming through. And 48% uh, non gel filtered, non colored. That was my next question. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I it's uh, I was really happy with the first time I tried it. It's you know, Lefroy is a big bold whiskey no matter what you do with it. Um, yes. But this is just it has a lush, you know, like you mentioned earlier, that kind of oiliness to it. It's really gorgeous whiskey, it's beautifully balanced. Yeah, yeah, it's fruity. Yeah. yeah, really, really awesome. I always figure too when you're we we're talking about that cutting of the peat by hand, uh, with it being wetter, I guess it probably carries over some of maybe some of the natural salinity from the uh, from the air, right, and the smoke and this the ocean being around too. That yeah, no, it, it. absolutely. So, and it's, it's a good question because basically the geology of the island, the the bottom half where the south end of the island where Lefroy is situated came out of the sea 400 million years ago. So the peat beds are actually based on decayed seaweed, and decayed sea vegetation. So that will absolutely come from the bottom into the peat beds. And then on the top of the peat beds, you've got a different type of grasses, kind of mosses, stuff like that, putting flavours down the way. So both of these added together really make the look the, Isla peat and Lefroy peat so different, so it will add a bit of salinity into it as well. And then basically through the walls beside me is where we're in there, we're right beside the sea, we're right in the ocean. Basically, if you stood in that still house behind you, you could throw a stone and it would hit the water, basically, if you threw it over the mountains. So yeah, it's it's we're right next to the sea. So all of these things. Um, chemical reactions going on inside the cask as well with the outside environment all play into that nice salinity you get in the fluid. It's only there for a wee while though. It, it, it can come and go in different whiskies, but 6 to 13 year old is a sweet spot if you want salt in the fluid. Yeah, I would agree with that. We've had some excellent single cask, single digit age Lafroigs over the years that I think show a little more of that kind of briny character sure yes. um john lauren asked if for someone who's hasn't experienced a lot of isla whiskeys what uh what would be a good lafroig to start with it's uh rarely i think do you have starter whiskey and lafroig in the same sentence <laughs> but if they're gonna if they're gonna start out with lafroig which one would you go with oh that's a good question i probably need to ask more questions for with lauren but equally we do have one that i would say is a good introduction in lafroig select so because we've used five different cask styles with select, it, it doesn't feel so powerful on the palate because we've just kind of masked that kind of peaty power with a wee bit of the cask flavor. So there's Oloroso sherry, there's Pedro Jimenez sherry, there's virgin American oak, there's Forceville bourbon, and there is quarter cask, Lafroy and select. So all of these, oaky flavors will start to come through and generally kind of mask some of the peatiness. The other side of that is, and it's, it's a, this is a good Benny story, um, I was doing a tasting in the, the South Loop store um, about, well, I'm thinking it must be five years, four or five years ago. And we, we had, we had the, it must be the hotline crew and we had, we had a full tasting room and then after we just kind of stayed there and we were just tasting through things and I still had all the the, the marks sitting on the table and then this, this this mammoth giant of a man came up to me and says, oh, I've been told to come up here and taste this Lefroy. I've never tasted Scotch whiskey before. <laughs> okay. Okay. And he says, just give me the best shit you've got. And I went, okay, I'll show you that. <laughs> but we had Lefroy cask strength. And I, honestly, I kid you not, it was up to here. And he just, and he went <laughs> down with a lot. And then he looked at me and he went <gasps> down on his knees on the floor. <laughs> he held on to the table. He was holding on to the table. And he went, oh. That's the best whiskey I've ever tasted in my life, he says. <laughs> <laughs> and he walked out with a case of cast strength Lefroy. 
So he gets after it. I love it. <laughs> who knows where you start and where you end up for the throw? Sometimes you jump in at the deep end and it's lovely and you just you swim around and you just enjoy all. Sometimes you've got to go in and paddle up. How do you how do you like to take challenges on in your life, I guess? Yeah. The 10 was my first Lafroig that I had, but it and, and I, I don't think that I was quite prepared for uh, the flavor so much, but I did have someone set up kind of the scene of being on a, a beach at the ocean with a kind of a, a, a log that we just set on fire that was drifting in our direction as we had fresh uh, oysters. So to picture myself there with also some fresh honeycombs and uh, having that in my mind when I drank Lefroig for the first time, I was like, this kind of actually makes a little bit of sense now. But I think I'd have gone in with like, any- I'm in totally blind. Yeah, it would have, it would have dropped me to my knees as well. <laughs> yeah. No, it's also- it is, it's funny, it's the same with me, but like the first time I tried Lafroig, I was just like, oh, what is this? But like, I, 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 why? There's so many questions, just like doing a hundred mile an hour through your head. Like, I, how do people drink this? I, I, like, what happens? Um, and then you just, I think you want to understand how something tastes like that. So that's kind of how I just broke it down. All right, so they mold their own barley, they, they do this, they do that. They, all oh, right, it can't taste it any other way than the way it tastes. Right, okay. And then when you get down to the South Island, and you guys have been, that's you were saying that's a picture from three years ago, Pat, behind you. The yeah, probably three, four years ago, I think we were there. Yeah. So when you get down there, you realize, oh, it's, it's all peat bogs. I've just driven through peat bogs to get to here, and oh, we're right beside the sea, and oh, that's the smell of seaweed and all that. And then you just think, oh, it can't taste it any other way. It's just, it's a product of its environment, and you just think, "Ah, oh, right, this is cool. This is yeah. cool." So then you just you understand, I guess, and then you still don't like it. Well, that's that's okay because Lefroig isn't sometimes for the faint-hearted, and sometimes you just won't like it. But when when you do, I think the the, the people that do love Lefroig are very very passionate about Lefroig. Yeah, nobody nobody has a middle of the road opinion on Lefroig. That's for yeah. sure. No. Uh, you mentioned cast strength earlier, and that's always been one of my favorite Lafroigs year in and year out. Uh, we'll have a new batch of that probably coming soon, won't we? Yeah, no, there's going to be actually two batches this year because really? we're going to release more of that as well because it is so popular. It's so, so mm. popular. So we, we will release two batches of Lafroig cast strength. So we'll have batch 13 and batch 14 coming this year. And that's the first time that there's been two batches in a year since the very early days, right? Okay, yeah, no, I'm, yeah, probably before there was batches. Yeah, and okay. we have done specific US batches in the past as well. So you can, if you're very clever, find two batch twos, but yeah. one was just a US only batch. So, okay. um, so it, I don't know why we called it batch two, but anyway, that's the way it goes. So that's something to look out for. But yeah, there'll be two different batches coming this year to cast it. So, and, and, and I like it too. I like the anticipation of it because you, ne you never know what it's like until it's bottled. And then you're trying to produce a different flavor from different areas of warehouses or rack houses or whatever, and just, it's amazing the difference you can get from different levels and etc. So I, um, I, I quite like the geekery of it all as well as how it's going to end up. Because if it's a dry one, I'm going to go, oh, I don't like dry. Jesus, I don't like dry. But like if it's like balanced and it's power and it's just sitting there and it lasts and the depth goes on and on and on, I'm happy as Larry. Yeah, for sure. Um, so two batches are getting bottled this year. Um, do we have any idea when they're going to land? Because of course we're already getting questions. Alexander Turnbull wants to know when cast strength is going to be landing at Binnie's here. Yeah, so it's, well, we've just got Sherry Oak land in the US just now. That you've got you've got some stuff there. The next thing will be Carches, uh, but batch thirteen will not be far behind that. So through the summer months. When it's 100 degrees, you're going to get that cast strength arriving on your shores. 
That's when we usually get it. It's, it's no big deal. Yep. Now you mentioned Karcha's coming. Um, so that is your traditional bottling for Fagio, right? Yes, that's correct. Um, and it's, well, yeah, it's, it's all virtual this year, just like we are, unfortunately, just due to this uh, virus, the global pandemic just now. So it would have been nice to have been doing this in the store and stuff like that with you. But it's, it's, it's great that we can be together. So yes, Karcha's will launch. We're launching it at the distillery next week, um, just because when we decided that the 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 festival, the whiskey festival, would be virtual. We we thought, well, it's best not to start releasing bottling so that people don't come to the island because yeah, we have to take care of the community as well. So, so we. Uh, uh, the good news is, I guess, and certainly in Scotland, that the vaccination program is going well and it's definitely making a difference. So we are kind of launching next week on site online 15th of July and um, it'll be very in the US 15th of July as well actually so okay. um, if you can't make it to Isla uh, note the 15th of July in your diary and this one this year if you don't like this one it's time to give up whiskey because yeah, it's just <laughs> the best it's, it's unbelievably good liquid it's it's a cask strength PX cask, and it is absolute oh, wow. nectar. It's it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Uh, Fifty nine. What's that? One hundred eighteen proof. One hundred eighteen proof. Non chill filter, wow. non coloured, and it is just. It lasts for about three days with every sip. It's just unbelievable. It's, I'm so happy with that one as well. Yeah. I can't wait to try that one. That's that the first great. PX. Sorry. Is it first fill? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The novel is, is, is through the triple mature process. So uh, five to 11 year old bourbons, double matured in quarter gas for six months. And then uh, in first fill, uh, Pedro Jimenez uh, seasoned hogsheads for just over two years. So it is, uh, and cask straight. So just straight from the cask. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah, that's no, amazing. It's, I can't wait to taste it. You'll be happy. You you will be very happy when you taste that one. I'm a big fan of the non-chill filtration thing. It's, uh, you know, if God wanted us to filter our whiskeys, he wouldn't have given us livers. So uh, <laughs> Simon brings up a good point here, though. Uh, how many how many people are currently making Laphroaig? You know, we have this kind of view of this bucolic little you know, farm distillery on an island or something. But as you can see behind me, I mean, for those who haven't been, it's a fairly large operation, but in the grand scheme of single malt whiskey, it's really not that big. Um, you know, between, you know, cut, hand cutting this peat and then, you know, malting in-house and ferment, fer fermentation distilling, I mean, and then warehousemen, I suppose too. I mean, how many people does it take to make a bottle of Lefroy? It's a total staff at the distillery is, uh, there's well, there's ten uh, operators that produce the the whiskey. There's four in the maltings, and there are three warehousemen. And then there is a uh, Caroline, who runs the show, really. Uh, Barry, who's the assistant distiller, and myself. So that is that right. is twenty people. And Nigel, yeah. the engineer. Nigel, the engineer. So 21. Wow. But like right now at 9.25 p.m. on a Friday evening, there are two people on site right now. One in the stills behind you and one in the mash house opposite. So all through, all through the weekend, it's just two folks. Now, are, are you guys in the stills are running seven days a week now, I assume, right? Yeah, 24 7. That's right. Yeah. 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 And there's, uh, so I mean, what's the, if, if, if and when the uh, accountants want you to make more whiskey, what's the bottleneck at the distillery then? Is it fermentation capacity? Uh, it's everything now. Because we have, well, over the last decade or so, but we have removed all the bottlenecks. So now it's, we have completely like balanced from 
that point of view. So we just need to expand. We need more of everything now. So we wow. need more maltings, we need more mashing, we need more stilling, and we need more warehouses. So it's just that's we just need to expand everything now because we've we have removed all the wee creases. And that's kind of a lot of what we've been working on over the last decade or so. Wow. Yep. So, yep. No, we're making it as fast as we can. You guys are just thinking it faster. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good point, yeah. And we've just got to wait 10 years. It's, it's so hard to predict 10 years in advance as well. What are, going to be, what are people going to be doing in 10 years? I don't know what I'm going to be doing in 10 years. Did you? So, like... It's, it's, it's always an equation you get wrong. Yeah. But. I don't know. I think I'm going to be stuck here with Joe in 10 more years still. We'll see. Likely. It's quite likely. <laughs> if we play our cards right, we'll get to keep this job of tasting whiskey for a living. Doesn't, There's worse doesn't to sound so bad to me. It doesn't sound yeah. so bad. It's not rough. No. Well, this 10-year share, and it's just exciting. I mean, Triple Wood was always a good whiskey, and I enjoyed it yeah. a lot. But it had, you know, we figured something was up because it, it had been out of stock for quite some time. Um, it was one of the issues. But I talking. will say this is this is a bit tastier than the triple wood, in my opinion. I think it's just I just I'm a sucker for that round, lush sherry character. I suppose. No, and I think generally that's the feedback we we do. We've got this club called Friends of Freud, mm -hmm. and we generally do go around asking them for their opinions, and this kind of is why we're nudging more towards this, just because. People eat yourself part are thinking, well, yeah, no, I like triple wood. But it was, it was frustrating because it was such a complicated recipe that we couldn't keep up with demand as well. And then, like, well, I've got another, I've got 10 year old here. This mm -hmm. is the main brand. So, like, if 10 year old was growing faster than anticipated, well, stock would be taken away. And so it was just like, oh. it just ended up a bit. Frustrating. So now, if Everton's ten year old and we've got ten year old Sherry, it just it just if Everton's ten, it just makes managing things a bit easier as well, to be honest. So, and it, allow, it allows us to do to manage things a bit easier and to support what the consumers are wanting. Yeah, yeah. And it, again, if people change their minds, they change their minds. It's we we've just got to. I guess with Friends Lafroy, it allows us to tap into that consumer knowledge and adjust accordingly because I guess you were talking about non-chill filtration and non-colored I guess the only one that we do really allow the reserve the right to is 10 year old because well it's kind of it's been there for 100 years and who are we to change that recipe so the, the other ones are all generally non-chill filtered non-colored nowadays because consumers want that yeah Oh, there's a uh, transparency and authenticity. There is the name of the game these days, for sure. Yeah, absolutely, totally agree. Yeah, well, it's been a, such a perfect age, I think, too, for for this whiskey, just because you, you still get all the freshness and the explosiveness of the peat. It's not not really uh, lost everything, and uh, the wood isn't really overpowering, but it's still there as a complement. It's just long enough for it to start to really be incorporated and, and blend really nicely together with this particular spirit. Yeah, no, I would agree with you there as well. And like the all in also it's a, a, a dry sherry as well, and a bit partly dry sherry that gives it that kind of musty kind of oak, like the, I don't know, what would you call it? Um, we're not going to use the same word here, but like it's like a kind of a cloth sack taste to it a wee bit. So you get all the lovely kind of ripe red fruits and then you get uh, a nice kind of oily kind of creaminess coming through and then you get that sacky kind of note at the end as well so and it's an oloroso sherry so that mixed with the kind of the peat the salinity the kind of aromatics that come off the kind of floral notes coming through as well from the Lacroix new spirit it, 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 it gives a lot of depth and I think that's definitely how I would measure a whiskey it's like yes Lacroix is peaty but like when you when you when you go into the glass again on your nose, if you put the peat to the back, you get another flavour and then you go back in. Oh, I'm smelling something else now. And it just builds and builds and builds and you get that depth. And that's 
that's generally to me how how I would judge a whiskey. It's like depth of flavor as much as kind of one really good flavor. That's something Joe commonly does when we're tasting barrel samples or new whiskeys in the office. He'll pour a glass of whiskey on his desk and just leave it there all day and just go back to it every 30 minutes and re-smell it and taste it again. And it's uh, pretty pretty remarkable how, how a whiskey, especially a, you know, a, a burly, bold whiskey like this evolves over time, for sure. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Got a question on uh, Facebook here from, uh, let's see, sorry. Michael on Facebook asks, if you are concerned that there might be another whiskey lock, so whiskey lock when there was you know, the big lot of whiskey in the 80s and everybody closed, I guess. No. No, because we have, like, am I, no, I'm not really, because I think whiskey is, like, brown spirits in general are generally gaining in popularity, I think. Um, younger people nowadays um, certainly don't just drink white spirits. They can go straight into brown spirits straight away. So I think the demographic of spirits is changing as well. Also, gender-wise, a lot is changing as well. So it's not just <laughs> it's not just middle-aged men that are drinking whiskey anymore. Everyone's yeah. drinking whiskey. So um, I think that's cool. Um, you certainly see that. I think, fingers crossed, with the economies and stuff like that, people have got more money to spend as well. So they don't just want a cheap buzz anymore. They want yeah. something to taste something that's quality, that's got a story behind it, and it kind of almost reflects them as much as anything else as well. So I think consumers are changing, economies are changing, and so people want to try and understand different things and maybe just have two or three really good drinks rather than uh, maybe seven or eight of average. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it's uh, people, people are demanding higher quality stuff for their dollars now. People, I think it's just more discerning with your money, whether it's drinking craft beer or drinking, you know, higher quality wine, or, you know, if you're, nobody's drinking, you know, sure, some people are still drinking really cheap blended swill or something, but, you know, the whis whiskey loving, I think, and having that discerning dollar is here to stay for sure. Um, Steve wants to know, he assumes you met Prince Charles during one of his visits to the distillery. Uh, Lafroy is kind of famously his favorite whiskey, I think. Uh, do you know what his favorite Lafroy expression is? Yes. So, yeah, I've uh, hosted Prince Charles three times and his favorite whiskey would be kind of 15, 18 year old. That's his sweet spot range. So, yeah, in, the, in that area. Uh, he did like the 16 year old as well that we released last year to you 16 was excellent yes yeah, yeah. Um, so that's his sweet spot so teenage Lefroy is his yeah i mentioned earlier i've had some really good single digit stuff but i've had some just amazing late teenage years oh, Lefroy, I think we, so. we drank a case of the 30. yeah we did drink a case somebody, of 30 once somehow just we to be sure, with some open just to be sure right yeah. <laughs> we used to, we used to be able to ship funny. whiskey all over the place oh this yeah, might be good i don't know we'll just need to keep going we, 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 we had case. a good customer in oregon who bought who bought a whole lot of stuff from us and he on on our recommendation bought a bottle of Freud 30 case. and he a, a case because usually if we recommend something he'd buy he'd buy multiple and he opened the first bottle and he tasted a tiny little bit and said this is corked and uh then he opened the other five bottles and drank uh, one ounce out of each of them and said, these are all corked. And, uh, you know, and we told him really, there's probably zero chance of this, but you know, you spend a lot of money, you're a good customer, we'll refund it. Uh, but you got to ship those back to us. And he shipped them back to the office. This is when we were still at South Loop. And there was absolutely nothing wrong with those whiskeys, but they were open. So, you know, they had to get drank. So, um, that kind of does leave me, Simon asked that question in the chat, uh, what our favorite, what our desert island Lafroigs are. I would say that's probably mine. It was probably <laughs> that 30 year. And I mean, that's just going back to like the, what, 05 or something, 07, that whatever. I my hands on like that. some uh, new make. If I could just get some nice new make from you, that would probably also be on my desert island. Because uh, for some reason, I, I really just That's enjoy it. the Kentucky it. guy in you coming out. I don't it's think so anybody good. really wants new make. New make is <laughs> delicious. What's your best drive on the Freud, man? Uh, 
that's cool. No, the 30 old war is awesome. We did three bottlings of that yeah, around about the, the millennium. So yeah, and it was, it was, it was, it was really lovely liquid. Yeah, hell of a bottle. Yeah. I think more recently, I really enjoyed the um, the cartridge that was the cast strength quarter cask. That was one of my favorites recently. And it's a, you know, there's obviously there's a lot of barrel finishings with the cartridges and stuff every year, but that one was just it was such a pure expression of the Lafroy distillate. Like, yes, there was, you get more oak influence from the slightly smaller cask, but uh, it was, it, it just, it let Lafroy be Lafroy, I think. It didn't, didn't add layers of, of other cask to it, so to speak. Yeah, and that was a friend of Lafroy that came up with that idea. A guy from New York named Matt Lewin. So that was just, Thanks, that was his idea. So it was, it was a very good idea. Yeah. And I'm really be happy about that. I'm excited about this PX that's coming. Yeah. That's good. That's very, very good. I had a PX Lafroy before. I want to say, I think it was a duty-free bottle. Yeah, we'd have been. Yeah. So we've, we've done, and that one's still there. It is still in uh, duty-free travel retail. That That's 48% non-chill filter, non-color. But it's a, uh, the cast strength's a different beast. It's a completely different beast. And it's just, it's, it's so like magnified and intense. It's like PX is gorgeous and it's kind of smoky raisins. This one is just like condensed, condensed. It's like a hundred times more condensed than PX. So it's just it's it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's right. cool. Well, what are you gonna call your desert island then? Oh, my desert island. Oh. Uh, Hard to choose. Oh yeah, no, because like I've I've been here for so long. <laughs> <laughs> I've been lucky to taste so many great Lafroys as well. Uh, like if it was there's kind of there's two thoughts go through my head. Like I just love a big PT slap in the face. So just a like what like and here here's here's a scoop. So next year's cartridge will be an eight-year-old. And that's my favorite age of Lafroy. But it will be a kind of medicinal, salty, kind of just a complete by the seaside nice. slap in the face. So that would be kind of definitely, if I want a Lafroy, that would be the, the kind of most luxurious one would probably, there's two, that's my, I'll go for this one. There's a 1980, 27-year-old, um, and the liquid is like um, blackstrap rum. If you've ever seen that from really? the cruise line, it's just that color. It is it's just what a color of a liquid and what a taste. It was just, it was three sherry butts mature fully mature 27 years and it was there was at the top of a warehouse so it was just really driving in and out the way and so the color was just unreal it was it was the, if you can google it you'll see the color like because it was in a clear bottle as well so the 1980 27 year old and there was about a thousand bottles of that produced oh. Certainly qualifies as a desert island the throwing then, I suppose. Yes, I think so. I think so. All right. Well, John, I mean, uh, we talked about what's coming. We talked about what's here now. Uh, yes, I'm not sure yeah. if there's any other secrets you can spill for us. Or uh, I don't know if any secrets. It's just we just do what we do, and that's it. I guess. Um, so Simon asked if you can cover the uh, the bodegas that you use for the sherry cabinets. Which I um, haven't heard about this. Yeah, no. So it's based in the north of Spain, and uh, they take the wood. This is the wood, especially. It comes from just in the border of Spain and just over into France, and it's it's up in the mountains, and the wood grows slightly different there as well. So we we use uh, this quite unique uh, bodega, uh, and he basically seasons like cuts the wood, shapes the wood, and then will season the wood for 
minimum two years for us. So like the, the PX, so we're talking about the Karchis or the Sherry Oak, the casks that we get from him for the, the maturation will be seasoned for a minimum two years. So it's really right into the wood. And because the wood is kind of slightly different at altitude here as well, you just get a different kind of intensity or, or toast with the with the charring and also with just the growing. So it just it gives a really nice kind of kind of black peppery spicy note into the from the oak and the, the he grows his own actually grapes and he's got his own vineyards uh, down in Hereth as well. So he he's got the whole process sewn up within the one kind of outlet and he's got a he's actually got a cooperage now in Pennsylvania as well so he's got his own spot over in the US just kind of doing kind of everything shipping European oak to because a lot of the the distillers in the US are using European oak now just to try and get a slightly different kind of flavor profile coming through in either their bourbon or their whiskey um, and so he, he bought a cooperage in Pennsylvania um, so yeah, he's just swapping it all around, but it's a real craft process he uses, and it's a unique process. And every part, it's all kind of done for a specific purpose and flavour at the end of it as well. Yeah, but we've been using them for the eighty, which yes, yeah, forty years. Ago. And that's where all the sherry casts that you guys are sourcing are coming from—the one bodega. Yes. Yeah, we use the one bodega, yeah. And where, so whether it's uh, Pedro Jimenez, whether it's Oliver Sucheri, um, whatever, Virgin European Oak, it all comes from uh, Miguel. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, the Sherry Oak is fantastic. Sherry Oak 10-year-old is available at your local Binnie's for $89.99. Pretty much everywhere. There's a couple, couple of smaller stores might not have it. Uh, you know, but pretty much every Binnie's now we have everything Lafroy we can get for the most part. Um, the really high end stuff you can always find at the city stores in Lincoln Park or South Loop. So, um, John, thanks for joining us today. This whiskey is great. Uh, it's always uh, great to get a kind of sneak peek behind the upcoming Karchis release. So PX cast strength coming up in July, it sounds like, hopefully here by mid July and uh, cast strength batch as well, of course. So. Um, John, it's a pleasure. Hopefully, we can have you back in a store and doing one of these in person again soon. So we've got yeah, we keep building stores and we keep putting classrooms in them. We just haven't been able to use them for the last year or so. But uh, yeah, no, we'll get there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, great to talk to you guys. Great to see you guys again as well. So yeah, yeah. thanks to all the, the team at Benny's for their support and uh, to the consumers. So Brett sends his best. Brett's on a plane on the way to California to judge a craft spirits competition or something. But. Uh, well, yeah. cheers, John. Thank you. Cheers, everybody else. Um, we'll see you next week. Next week, we'll be back with a mezcal tasting on Wednesday, actually. So, until mm -hmm. next week, John, thank you. Take cheers, care. everyone. Thanks for joining.